Psalms chapter 54. To the chief musician on Nigeroth, which is a string instrument, Mashiel, which is instruction, a psalm of David when the Zithims came and said to Saul, Does not David hide himself with us? So again, you can mark where this psalm is. When it happens, David's on the run. You know, your best writings, your best Christian walk you'll have is when you're in trouble. That's when you're closer to God with trouble. Save me, O God. And according to the title of this psalm, that's what David needs to be saved. Here comes the enemy. By, uh, by thy name, Jehovah, God. It's only one name above all names, Philippians 2, 9. And judge me by thy strength. So David's saying, listen, I'm not going to trust in my muscles. I'm going to trust in your name, and I'm going to trust that you're going to give me the strength. You're going to judge me if I, you know what, I can't do it. So it's got to be judged by you, God. Hear my prayer. All right, if the people are turning on David and, and telling the enemy where he is, you would be praying. You ought to be praying all the time, good or bad. Give ear to the words of my mouth. And again, it's not like God doesn't hear us, but when you're in trouble and problems and you want that instant relief, you're going to think that God's not listening. Every Christian has felt like that. It's normal. But God hears us. For strangers are risen up against me, the Zithims. And you're not going to, you're not only going to get problems from, from your family. Believe it or not, Saul was of David's family. And I mean, of, uh, I don't know what would you call it, but uh, Saul was of Benjamin and David was of Judah and they were brothers. They were of the same father, Jacob or Israel. David is getting trouble from his own family. And then you, for us, for the Christian, you, you get trouble in the church. Christians. And then you'll get people on the outside will give you trouble. And oppressors seek after my soul. People who want David gone, want him dead. They don't want to have anything to do with him. That was Abigail's husband. Um, I can't think of his name. You know, David helped helped his, his uh, men out and took care of them and protected them. And when he went to go get some food or, or raiment and, and and little fire, whatever he needed, he oppressed David. I'm not going to give you know what is David that runs away. And then he had a big big fat party and got drunk. And there's David and his men out there. What do they got to eat? Nothing. And in the Christian life, you're going to look at look at everything they got. Oh, I wish I was like that. I wish I had. And it's wrong. And those that have, like the government, is going to oppress us to seek after our souls. Listen, they got us taxed to death. From birth to the grave, they tax us and everything in between. They have not set God before them. And that's why they are risen against David. That's why they seek after his soul because there is no God before them. So when you got an enemy, and they're against you, even Jesus said that they come, the disciples come in. We saw this man casting out devils in thy name, and we forbid him. Jesus said, him, him that is for us is not against us. All right? There was a woman passing out tracts downtown one time, and she wasn't part of our group, but 
the track I got in the back, it was good. The land goes out after we do. It's good. They don't have to be part of our group. But when you get supposedly Christians who go against you, according to this thing right here, they don't have God before them. When you're doing active ministry for the Lord and you believe that God has called you to do it and it is Bible, it is biblical, it is scriptural, and when a church or Christians mock you, when they make fun of you, or they try to deter you from that ministry that you can find in the Bible, i got to call you to question. Now, I was just told the other day, and let me tell you what a pastor told me. I, I talked to the pastor, and I got witnesses to this. I said, let's go knock on doors. No, 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 we can't do that. That don't work. We can't use trick tracks. Those are we can't use them at all. They're wicked. I'm like wow, okay. Now with that, I have been told that that church is now knocking on doors, and I got to call the question: What are they doing? When we were going to do it, it was wrong and wicked. Now they're doing it. I'm wondering what they're using. Or that pastor has has to, has not made a phone call to me and apologized to me that he could have deterred me from serving the Lord by his big mouth. So I'll, I'll never see style again, so I won't. Or it's not right. What they're doing is not right. They're knocking on the door. Yeah, it may not be right. According to what the words of the pastor that church told me personally, and if I would have kept the email, which I may have, I'd, I'd show you the email. I might start doing that. People that oppress you and are against you, according to verse 3, do not set God before them. God would not tell a Christian to go get after another Christian unless you're sinning. James never called Paul an idiot for preaching on the streets. But Paul went up to Peter one day and said, you know what, I rebuke you because of the activity that you did, uh, you caused a, a dissolution, you caused a problem amongst the Christians, and you were wrong. Now that's not against the work of Peter, that's against a sin that Peter had done. Selah. Oh. That's a musical rest. It's also, there's an advent coming. Behold, God is my helper. Where would the advent be? Strangers are risen against me. Non-Jews. And oppressors seek my soul. Oh, gee, if I know the Bible and Revelation, I know someone's going to seek after Jewish people at a point in time. Revelation 12. And the Antichrist is going to seek to destroy the souls of the Jews. So there's the tribulation and God is my helper, second advent. That God is going to be Jesus Christ. Revelation 19. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. See, those that are on your side when your Bible's scripturally sound and doing what God wants you to do, God will send you help. But all they that live, live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to have enemies in verse 3. That's a life fact. He shall reward evil unto my enemies. Well, you look at those are the enemies and you say, wow, they're doing great and all that. It doesn't say here on earth, does it? Now, they may. Maybe God will give them a bankruptcy. Maybe God will give them a cancer. Maybe God will give them a... Maybe, 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 maybe not. What do you do? When the wicked, the enemies of God's people, the enemy of Christians, the enemy of Jews, they live 
miraculously, gloriously, richly, and and they die richly and all that. Well, I guess the Bible's wrong. No, there's a judgment coming, the Great White Throne judgment. And then you go to Luke chapter 16. What did what did Abraham tell that rich man? Well, in the earth you live great and wonderfully and all that, and Lazarus lived poor and all that. Well, now Lazarus got his reward, and you got yours. Go back and read Luke 16. That rich man died died in wealth. That Lazarus died dogs licking him. And the rich man got the reward of evil. He got hell. So what is hell? It's evil. How do you like that? Cut them off in thy truth. What did Jesus say? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. Jesus Christ is going to cut them off. Remember I told you, when you go in the Old Testament and you read the cut off for the Jew, that meant hell. When you go out to a tree and you cut off a branch, it, it's no more part of that tree. The truth of God will put a man into hell. For the Old Testament is, I set a city, I sent the temple, I set laws, I set a people that you were supposed to go to. Naaman did. The Queen of Sheba did. The Ethiopian eunuch went to Jerusalem. You know, there are a lot of wicked, evil people that went to Jerusalem in this time just to trade off their spices and, and, and condiments and whatever they had to, to trade off. And it, <coughs> excuse me, and it had nothing to do with God, even though God was there. The truth is the Lord Jesus Christ today and the reward of evil to the enemies will be hell. I will freely sacrifice unto thee. Which is God. I will freely sacrifice unto thee, God. What's the freely? The law stated, I have to bring this offering. I have to bring this offering. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to go three times a year. If my wife has a baby boy, I have to do this. If she has a baby girl, I have to do that. Every tenth lamb, as I line them up, is the Lord's. i got to make sure that animal is exactly right for God. Freely is, I'm going to give it out of my own heart. And that is what we are to do. The New Testament says in Corinthians, we are to do it of, not of necessity, not uh, grudgingly, not of, you know, you have to do it, but we are to give it freely. Or God will accept it. God loves a cheerful giver. I will cheerfully sacrifice unto, unto thee. I'm going to do it because I want to do it, Lord. I will praise thy name. How do you praise the name of the Lord? By giving to him. Sacrifice. Listen, it's not just money. When you, when, when you go in a Baptist church, and it's money, money, money. No, it's not money. It's money. It's time. You said it wasn't money. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's look at a category. It's money. It's time. It's yourself. It's your family. It's your automobile. It's it, it's your effort. It's your love. It's your family. It's your na neighbors. It's your job. It's your co-workers. Sacrifice is giving up something. And how does the Bible declare God's sacrifice for us? For God so loved the world, he gave. I will freely give unto thee. I will cheerfully give unto thee. 
I don't have to go into no Hebrew or Greek or any junk. O oh Lord, for it is good. There is none good, none, none, there is none good, there is none that doeth good. For all of sin come the short of glory of God. Is that good pointing to the person or is it pointing to what you give to God? It's not the person. It's what you did. You know, you're going to stand at the judgment seat of Christ and you are a sinner. Face it. No Christian is going to have everything remain as gold, silver, precious stone. You're going to have something burn. Paul will have something burn up. You know, Paul three times told the Holy Spirit, no, I don't care what you say, I'm going to Jerusalem. Three times the Holy Spirit told him, don't go. Paul was disobedient to the Holy Spirit. What is the good for a Christian? Me standing before the Lord? No. I'll tell you what the good is for the Christian. The gold, the silver, the precious stones. That is what's good. You know what's not good? The pile of the ashes. That's not good. And what is the good? What, what is it? It's the freely sacrifice that you did unto God in the praise of his holy name. That's what comes to God. That's what the good of a Christian is. Imagine a Christian that doesn't do anything for them. I'm doing good. Really? Let's see what happens in the judgment seat of Christ. And it's not even us that do it. It's the Lord in us. Without the Lord Jesus Christ and being born again, who's going to go out and tell, you have an atheist come knocking at your door and telling you about God? For he, God, has delivered me out of all trouble. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. David's in trouble again. And God will get him out of trouble. Even if you are in trouble. And David did nothing for this trouble. This was caused by enemies of God. And David remembers, you know what? That trouble I had back there, God got me through it. This one now, he's going to get me through it. After he just said, Lord, open your ears. Said, Lord, make sure you hear my prayer. And my eye has seen his desire upon my enemies. David kept getting victories after victories. Now, he's not talking about my eye has seen the desire upon my enemy. As right now, what's going on in current events for David, he hasn't seen it. He's talking about when the Lord took, got me out of all the troubles, I've seen the Lord take care of. David watched a giant that's probably two sizes bigger than what he was just fall down to the ground because of a rock. In prayer and he watched an entire army of God shiver in their armor and God did something with a little rock and a little boy or a young man And now he sees that same man that shivered in the, in the armor chasing after him because he's doing right. And he knows that God is a righteous God, so right has to come out of it. David has been anointed king. David's faith is he's going to be sitting on that throne, just little troubles and problems as he gets there. God will take care of the enemies. God will take care of the problems. On this earth, maybe not. I can't promise you that. In eternity, I can promise you yes. I can promise you an enemy of a Christian 
or enemy of God's people who are doing right, such as David, will stand at the great white throne judgment, and you will watch God cast that desire of God into the lake of fire because they had been disobedient to God and had mistreated you as a Christian, where several places in the Bible says that God takes it personal on how they treat us. After all what Pharaoh did, after all the offerings that God gave him, after time after time of the long suffering, God's desire will be to place Pharaoh into the lake of fire because of judgment, because Pharaoh never did what God wanted him to do. Enemies will lose. We will be victorious. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great